this is an important application of the Slutsky's theorem and it is a very important result in probability and statistics. We have finished our uh, syllabus but uh, as it seems that learning never ends and I thought this is something you should know. Uh, and so, what I have here is a ratio x1, x2, x1 are iid random variables with mean mu and variance sigma square. That is it. We do not know what is the distribution of the xi. Now, I have defined a ratio of square root of n times xn bar minus mu by sn. xn bar is the mean of x1, x2, xn and sn square is called the sample variance. Actually, it should be n minus 1 in the denominator. Okay, it is called the sample variance in statistics. Now, uh, in probability and statistics, this ratio Tn is known as the student's t statistic. statistic. Okay, there are some typos. So, this is known as the student's t statistic. And uh, so, when uh, this, has, uh, this is a mighty useful quantity in probability and statistics, it is used in wide variety of uh, context. One of the basic application is that you want to test the hypothesis regarding a mean of a population for which the variance is unknown. And so, this is something uh, a very uh, important concept in probability and statistics. So, a natural question is what is the distribution of Tn? So, here is this result that if x1, x2, xn are iid normal, then Tn follows student's t distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom. So, student t distribution is a, a symmetric heavy tail distribution that we had discussed earlier. So, it is symmetric, uh, in, in, but it does not have any more symmetric in the sense that if x follows student t, so does minus x. But it does not have um, a degree of freedom mu is a parameter. So, if mu is a degree of freedom, that means for student t distribution, you will have moments up to mu, but not beyond mu. So, it has only finitely many moments and the extreme case of student's t distribution is when the degree of freedom is 1. Now, uh, the student's t is mighty useful because the ratio, this ratio follows student's t distribution. Of course, when uh, along with the IID assumption, you also assume that each x i is a normal. So, then it is student t. But the question is that in general, we do not know what are the x i s. Um, uh, we do not know the distribution of the x i s. So, if you knew, if you knew the distribution of x i s, then lot of uh, things can be done using something called Monte Carlo simulation. Let us not get into that. But in general, the point is that we have the data. We do not know what distribution or population it is coming from. So, we need to know the sampling distribution of T n. We know that if these are normal, then it is student's t. But what if um, this is not normal? but only satisfies the finite variance. So, in that case, we are interested in knowing whether Tn convert weakly to some random variable. So, what will happen then? If that happens, then for large n, we can at least use that distribution to approximate the probability distribution of Tn. So, let us first look at the denominator. So, if we forget this denominator, square root of n xn bar minus mu, so, then by the central limit theorem that we know, now why central limit theorem is applying because the variance is finite. So, by central limit theorem, this will convert weakly to a random variable z which follows distribution, normal distribution with mean 0 and variance sigma square. And uh, 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 now, there is something called law of large number or law of averages. This will ensure that the, uh, the denominator, uh, especially the uh, sample variance, this will converge to the expected value that that is if you uh, what is the expected value of this this is the sigma square so uh, the law of large number will ensure that sn square converges in probability to the probability constant sigma square and so sn converges in probability to sigma as n tends to infinity now comes the slutsky's theorem now, uh, before Slutsky's theorem, why does Sn converge to sigma? So, here is this basic uh, result that if Xn, uh, say Yn, a sequence of random variables converge to uh, a constant C, then for any continuous function G, G of Yn will converge in probability to Gc. So, that is the result basically used. What is the G here? Square root of X, where X is any positive random variable. 
so you have a root x in the numerator root x n um, root of square root of n into x n bar minus mu converging in law to n0 sigma square and the denominator s converging in probability to sigma so you, we have two sequences of random variable one converging in law or weakly and the other converging in probability to a constant so now slutkis theorem can be used so by class since the constant is a positive constant so by the third uh, uh, statement of the Slutkis theorem this ratio in converge to weakly to z by that constant and so this follows n01 distribution so for large n the student's t statistics is well approximated by n01 distribution this is a famous result in probability and statistics this is also known as the robustness of t statistic robust why robustness because for whatever be the distribution of x size, as long as they have finite variance, they are coming from a distribution with finite variance, root over n, x n bar minus mu by s n, which is the student's statistic, that is always well approximated by the normal distribution. So, um, this is a very important result and an application of the three important laws namely the central limit theorem law, law, law of large number and slutkis theorem are demonstrated here so this is something very important i think you should know